Good day to you. We meet together again with the Lord's word. Uh, today what I saw was that the Lord was having many kinds of seeds in his hand. He had very small seed like sesame and mustard. Then he had things like mango seed. I said, what are you doing? He said, it's a seed that is precious. Your life to me is precious because you are my seed. I planted you in, my, in your mother's womb, but you are my seed. I plant you in life situations, in a country, in a career, in a work field, in a family, of course. You are my seed. Uh, so it was uh, quite amazing, shall I say, that the Lord was looking at these very humble seeds. As you know, seed has no glamour, seed has no glory. Uh, now some people may polish up some seed and keep it on a table in a glass for good looks but that's rare seeds are not meant for good looks shall we say seeds are not meant for good looks uh, seeds are meant to the Lord said to fall down to the ground and die and produce a harvest and not be alone so it meant into me not be alone so then I understood that the seeds are precious what he wants to do with my life is precious and he though he's the great creator of the universe the wise designer all the systems that he has done with his marvelous brain he has to depend on seeds humble seeds to do well in the circumstance he plants them then I understood that the paddy is planted in muddy soil and some seeds like sesame grow in quite dry areas some need much water uh, some need very little water so seed to seed uh, maybe the looks differ sight differ uh, uh, nature differs the plant com certainly differs you know the small mustard plant as well or compared to a giant mango tree and some seeds a little acorn produces a mighty mighty oak uh, so seed oh seed the Lord uh, got me to understand my own life is precious and then I become a born-again seed with eternal life then the real life begins isn't it and then we are collected in a uh, the Psalm 126 says uh, the the sower the farmer weeps and he takes the precious bag of seeds here yes. so this bag of seeds I began to think it's a family we are born into and it's the spiritual family we are born again into to belong again in this bag of seeds and in it we knock each other uh, different kinds of seeds of course now well, there's also saying don't mix your seed the spiritual application is don't mix the spiritual and the carnal when we sow if we sow to the flesh of the flesh we reap corruption Galatians 6 11 and of the spirit we reap uh, peace and life so don't mix your seed don't corrupt the good seed God has born in you birth in you keep your genome produce after your kind Genesis 1 12 then we know seeds have to do with the next generation and we teach the seed life to our kids our next generation and then some people eat up all they have but we need to keep the seed for the next generation isn't it uh, so all these thoughts were going through my mind and the Lord kept looking at these seeds as if it is treasure I was quite uh, taken up now he's not looking at gold he's not looking at the blues of fire that sits on the crown of Queen Elizabeth and that blue sapphire went to her crown from Sri Lanka did you know that the largest blue sapphire ever found in the earth uh, that's in US somewhere came from Sri Lanka and the Queen's blue sapphire came from Sri Lanka uh, so we are quite famous for blue and yellow sapphires uh, but then the Lord they are precious of course uh, in the money market but the Lord is so taken up with these humble seeds he says uh, there's no future for the world without seeds correct every human life is a seed and it's a tragedy that some people would murder the baby in the womb what a terrible thing so so and he said adjust your life that you will uh, 
uh, you will uh, not eat up all your seed keep keep for sowing so we want to give what do you think the percentage would be like would you like to give 51 percent of your life as God's seed I'm not talking money I'm just talking about your lifestyle your life strength life energy life what you do with your life 51 percent as God's seed God can invest you and 49% of your life, you eat it up. You know, not in a bad way, of course. You, you use it for your consumption to do the things you want to do, including your, including your livelihood. So those who are, would become like seed would become stars burning bright in God's firmament, turning many to righteousness. Daniel 12.3 that was the epitaph written on the tombstone of Hudson Taylor in China. And when uh, many years later, his uh, first wife died, you know, uh, uh, first wife died, his first daughter died, Gracie, and then uh, his second wife really took to mission and uh, preserved his work. When he died, uh, it was uh, she who suggested this, and uh, so many people came from many different parts of China to visit this old saint who had passed away. And if I remember right, his uh, corpse was buried by a river, whether it's Sikiang, Yang Sikiang, Huang Hua, I forget, uh, but by a river, his graveyard. Uh, he, and, and then many came to see, and then it is written, they were the stars that burned bright in God's firmament, that would carry on the legacy of Hudson Taylor. May it be so for your life. You have heard his statement about Hudson Taylor. He was introduced once when he was quite very, very quite famous. He was introduced as the great and illustrious uh, Hudson Taylor. He got up and said, I have a great and illustrious God. I have a great and illustrious master, but I am his little servant. So uh, wonderful, isn't it? He's the one who said those who bear the cross will wear the crown. He's the one who said God's would work done in God's way will never lack God's provision. Principles on which China Inland Mission was founded. So that's a little bit about being the grain in God's hand. He was a young doctor when he went to China, contrary to his mission board's pronouncements, he himself went. Though he was, uh, when he founded his first, when he became the head of his mission, he founded it a little later, and he, uh, they, nobody knew how they, he would survive, but they not only really survived, they thrived. And they became the seed plot for the great Chinese uh, revival that would come under the communist regime. He had already planted the seed and he sent uh, those who were trained by him as barbers and traders and tailors and so on. And uh, the seed will not die. In fact, martyrs become the seed of the church. You understand? That's why God looks at his seed. Uh, the, and, and that's how God looks at his seed and says they are precious. He's, he's a wise husbandman. He's a wise farmer. He's always looking for the seed that will be long lasting. And, and he said in John chapter 12, okay, this is, the, this is the thoughts we carry this morning, how precious it is to be the seed of the Lord. And being the seed of the Lord is our prosperity. Our prosperity comes from Him. Now, prosperity has become a bad word because of bad usage of the doctrine of prosperity or the gospel of prosperity. But we must not deny prosperity. We want a mighty, abundant harvest of souls, beloved. <coughs> uh, beloved, I wish, John says, 3 John 2, I pray that in all things that you would prosper and be in health. Uh, even as your soul prospers. So we want health, we want prosperity to do the work of the Lord. John 12, so, uh, so the, the seed back are the relational people with whom we relate in our church family. And the warning is don't go isolate, don't go into self-existence. So this COVID time when churches got online, how are you finding coming back to church is easy or difficult? Going back to work, was it easy or difficult? You see, it was, it depended on how great the work you were doing. It depended on how, how much you needed the work, isn't it? Uh, so what do you think about coming back to church with COVID shutdown being lifted? Uh, is it easy or difficult? John chapter 12, verse 20. Now there were some Greeks among those who were going up to the worship at the feast. This is last time in Jerusalem. 
exactly the place where he's going to be buried and die and be raised up. Then, the, the, then these then came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee. Somehow Philip was like the front of his manager. You remember that uh, he, he's the one who looked out when 5,000 had to be paid what to do. And Philip and Andrew were a great bracket seemingly. Then came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee. He was visible, being the front of his manager for Jesus' team and campaigns, and began to ask him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And Jesus, uh, and Philip came and told Andrew. So there, Andrew. And Philip, came, Andrew and Philip came and told Jesus. Then Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has not how has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. So to be put, become the seed, and be in what God has put us into, God calls it glory and glorification. We need a redefinition of glory and glorification. It's in his hand. Can you see the farmer takes a seed in his hands, and they're about to be thrown. And do seeds say, oh no, I can't go out. I want to be in the bag forever and ever. So some Christians are like that, forever and ever inside the house. We are a mission, even as the Father has sent me, so I send you. We came from heaven as a seed. We were in our mother's womb. We were a seed in a family. We were a seed among friends in school, and we were a seed among our workmates. We are seed. And then we are to be God's seed everywhere. That's why we came from heaven to earth to fall down to the ground and die. Are you happy with your life harvest? Are you happy with your life harvest? Any frustrations? Any disappointments? This is time. It's high time. Time is short. To get it together with him. Come to him and say, I'm frustrated. If that's the way you go. I want a better harvest. Please help me. Problem was not in the seed. If the seed said, no, I don't want to go there, and he plants you and you uproot yourself, did you? You see the paddy is planted in the mud. Sesame is planted in dry ground. And some seeds can grow on ravines. Just hang on there. Even among rocky ground, some, some seeds grow. So he knows the circumstances, that's best. One seed doesn't come complain against another seed. Why, why are you paddy? Uh, why can't I become paddy? Uh, there's no such thing because the wise, sober, he takes the seeds and he sows where it is best for us. Shall we say, yes, Lord, sow me where it is best for me. Forgive me my self-existence. This is the problem with the seed. Jesus said it, oh seed, this is your problem. Here it is how he said it. This hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Hour has come, this hour. Truly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Only one issue Jesus had, only one if. He did not say if predators come. He, don't, he did not say if viruses come. He did not say if vaccines come. He did not say if a dictator comes. He only said, fall unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies. The unless is about being the seed that is willing to get there. Don't remain alone, isolated in your glass bottle. Me, good seed, nice seed, self-righteous seed, no. Falling down to dirt, that's the thing. Now, if the seed says, oh, my skin is nice and polished, I look so nice, I can't fall down to die, I'd rather remain alone, that's what Jesus is speaking. Seeds can feel like that. Have you felt like that? I'll rather be a bit alone. Uh, so, uh, and sometimes we feel the, the conditions where we have to die and share life with other people, yoke together in Christ with other people. We may, we may not think that company is congenial, but then that's how it is the Lord calls us. He's the wise sower. Shall we say in our heart, Lord, in all your dealings with me, you have been a wise sower. Don't have grudges with God. It works into your kidney, into your liver, into your gallbladder. Yes, don't have grudges with God. It works in. 
it works inside the wrong way. So he, he gives a warning, the wise master builder, the wise sower, the farmer who knows everything about us, who made the seed and sent it down here into our mother's womb. He, he says, this is the problem. Uh, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, that's the issue. It remains alone. So we say, Lord, we don't want to remain alone. We will be for some time in the precious seed bag. It's also precious. Then we get into the source hand and we are sown. Then we fall down to the ground. Uh, for a while we are not seen. We are taking roots downwards and then comes the shoot upwards. That's also a science of God. Root downwards and shoots upward. Yes. And the roots go down first and accordingly the shoot comes, the tree comes, branches come. But always first the roots grow down. Uh, so into the earth there. So earth is our mission field where God calls us. Remains and we don't want to remain alone. But if it dies, give up its own life. It bears much fruit. And then we are conscious a part of our life is for ourselves. A good part, I'm saying 51% of our life is back again for God investment. Invest me, deploy me, send me O Lord as you see it. And sometimes after a while he takes us back, so to say. Now this doesn't happen to a natural seed, but since we are spiritual seed, he keeps us in our in his precious bag and then again he sends us to be again falling down to the ground and raising up another set of people again and again. Paul did this in Colossae, Paul did this in Impossible Corinth, Paul did this in beloved Philippi in different places. He became the first seed that fell down to the ground and there were others who were raised up by him, producing after his kind. That's the secret of spiritual progeny. That's the secret of biological progeny. They produce, they become after your kind. So check your kind. Check your kind, generous or mean. Uh, uh, check your kind, you are lonesome and selfie or sharing and fellowshipping. Check your kind, because your children will become like you, biological children and physical children uh, and, and spiritual children. So I need to check my kind every day. What kind of seed am I? I'm going to produce after my kind. Patience or impatience? Yes. Uh, uh, grace or offense? After my kind? That's the thing. Seed, look after yourself. Look after yourself in Christ, of course. He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it to life eternal. So this seed is producing life eternal, and we want to produce life eternal in others. Oh Lord, in our fellowship we have this uh, one Lord Jesus Christ, two people for a year, in a three-part commitment, pray, win, nurture them into Christ. You understand? giving eternal life to others. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. Seems obvious. But, you know, when you look at the ministry, there are so many times the servant does not look like the master. Servant does not reflect the master. If I, your Lord and master, will do this for you, you need ought to do it for one another. He said it in the last night about washing feet. So cross has become the historic symbol, the wash basin and the towel, the cleaning towel could also have become Christianity symbol. We are, that was Jesus did. His life became laid down, a seed to be taken up in others' lives. John 10, 17, I, I laid down my life and I take it, my seed life in you. We said, yes, Lord, take up your life. All of me is available. All my heart is available. I keep nothing. You grow your seed in all my character, in all my ways. Then that would be a pleasant, pleasant cultivation. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. John 12, 26. Where I am there, my servant will be. Lord, we want to be with you always. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Seed. Your honor comes from heaven. You will see it. You'll be a star. Not on a stage, on God's firmament. Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high. Not part of this world, really. We are in this world, not of this world. John 17, Lord's Prayer. 
if anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. This is my experience. When we fall down to the ground and die like a seed, Father will learn. I have a little booklet called Academics to Spirituality. If you send a WhatsApp number, we will post it to you. Our WhatsApp number is uh, plus 94 77 49 59 214. We will post it to you. Uh, I have many other books, but today it is uh, enough that we have done this. So may you be happy to be the seed, and you will see the honor of the Father. He looks after his seed, even after we are deployed somewhere. He says, that's my precious seed, I will water it. Yes, he said that of his vineyard Israel. Remember, I watched her like the apple of my eye, hide me under the shadow of his wings. That's how he cares for us. He does not leave his seed desolate. Again and again, he'll watch over us. Will you become his seed? Will you hand your life over to Jesus? If you are listening and you have never done it, you have never thought of becoming a seed in God's program, seed in God's hand to be planted where God can give you the best harvest of your life. Otherwise, you are digging in, trying to do the best for yourself. Let's say together, it is better for God to do the best for myself than I trying to do the best for myself. Same with our kids. It is better for God to do the, His best for my kids rather than me trying to do best, best for my kids. We need to train up a child in the way he should go. That we have to tell our children, you were seed from God. You came to us as a seed from God. I had to be faithful in your life, for your life. I had to give account to God. There may be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Still, you have an accountability. How you help the harvest of your daughter's life, of your son's life. If you are walking with God, walking ahead with Him, then, you know, the Lord will. The Lord will uh, make you always fruitful. You never age as a seed, you know. In season to season, you rejuvenate. You are 85, there is another project. You become another seed. You never age. Seed has life. Seed has abundant life. Seed has eternal life. You will never say, I'm too old, nobody talks to me. No, 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 no. God talks to you. And I, as long as there's breath in your nostril, be like John Wesley. Day, the Sunday before, I think he died on a Monday morning. The Sunday before, he had done his five preaching stations that would involve some travel. And in the morning when he was passing away, he just said, uh, best of all, God is with us. 87 years old, five meetings on a Sunday and not with nice loudspeakers and systems and air conditioning. Out there in the open field, John Wesley at the age of 87, five meetings on a Sunday. What a life. A life that changed. A brisson enough that it stopped the revolution that France, France had. So historians say, the Methodist movement, one, your precious life, your precious seed. Don't water your precious seed. You will keep your destiny. God will help us. Father, we are praying that we will always be your precious seed and our children will be your precious seed. Our grandchildren will be your precious seed. Our spiritual progeny will continue to be your precious seed, bringing forth a noble harvest, hundredfold from my life, I ask. In Jesus' name.